I have this old Battery Tender Junior. It's the uh, the old model before they started releasing the the new plastic cover on it. That recently, anytime I plug it in, the light flashes very quickly green. And from what I've read online, there's a capacitor in there that basically goes bad over time, and it's a uh, somewhat simple fix to basically get the old capacitor out, put a new capacitor in. So we're going to try that today. To perform this repair, you're going to need the battery tender in question, a soldering iron. This is a butane one, but an electric one will work just fine. Some solder. A replacement capacitor. A multimeter is nice to have, but it's not necessary. And a Phillips head screwdriver to take the battery tender apart. The capacitor I have here is 47 microfarads at 27 volts. It should be a direct replacement to the one that's supposedly bad in, in this battery tender, but I'll take my battery tender apart and do some, some measurements on the existing capacitor to make sure that is the problem. With capacitors, they'll have two legs, a short one and a long one. The long one is a positive, the short one is a negative, and also they have a marking on the side if I can get my camera to focus, but this white line is the marking on the side that will be the negative leg. I'll move all the stuff to the side right now and start taking the battery tender apart. The battery tender will have three Phillips head screws that you need to remove. Once those screws are removed, you can remove the outer shell and set it aside. I'll throw the screws in there for now to keep track of them. Another thing that you can remove at this time, a little paper filter. Keep that in the case and you can set it aside for now as you won't be needing those until it's time to reassemble. If you look in here, there's a capacitor in question. Um, you can pull all of this out making sure that you pull this rubber grommet out or it'll give you a hard time getting it out. Kind of get everything straightened out and you'll need access to these two solder points. So set your battery tender up so that you can easily access those. If you take a look at this side of the board, you'll see there's a positive sign on this side of the capacitor leg. And that means that that solder point is a positive. I'll mark it on my board just so I can remember. Oops. Another easy way to determine which leg is which is if you follow the trail from one leg all the way over here to where it says ground, that's a pretty good indicator that this leg on the up opposite side is the negative leg. To test the capacitor with a multimeter, you hook up the positive and the negative while your multimeter is set in ohms mode, and the resistance should start climbing. This is a pretty good indication that this capacitor is bad, as I am touching both legs, and the resistance is staying at no readings. Taking a look at the replacement capacitor, if I touch the leads to the legs, you can see that the resistance starts to climb up, and it will continue to climb up until it reaches infinity which it has just done. I'll now desolder the old capacitor. With the old capacitor out of the way, we can work on getting the new one installed. I cut the legs on this one a little bit shorter so it was easier to install. I'm not a professional solderer by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm just going to double check from the back of the board to make sure that the capacitor is responding how it should be. Perfect.
buttoning it all up is just a reverse of the disassembly. There are little channels on both sides of this bottom housing that the board slides into, so make sure you do that. It's at this time that a third hand would really help. But with perseverance, you can get to it. The board has slid into the channels. At first look, you would think that it's not actually all the way in, but when you go to put the top case on it, you realize that, uh, that it is. Remembering to put the paper filter back into the assembly. And putting the top housing on shows that the gap is what it was from when it was sealed up so that the board is in its correct position. Install the three screws again. Now you can test it in an electrical outlet. When you first plug it in, the light will turn green, and if it's not connected to anything like this one is, the light should go back to flashing red. This is what it'll look like when you plug it in. Flashing red, since it's not currently plugged into anything, but once I reach down and connect it to the battery, the light will turn solid red, indicating that it has started to charge. And that's how to repair a capacitor in a battery tender junior.